The Antichrist is a central figure in end-time prophecy, and many believe he will rise to power during a time of global turmoil, offering solutions to problems while ultimately seeking to deceive and control the world. Here's an in-depth look at where he fits into the sequence of end-time events and all the details traditionally associated with him. The Bible doesn't provide specific physical details about the Antichrist's appearance, but it does emphasize his personality, charisma, and ability to deceive. Based on the descriptions given, the Antichrist's appearance will likely be part of his appeal and deception. Here's what is commonly believed about how he may present himself and how he may fool people with his looks and presence. The Antichrist is expected to be highly charismatic and appealing, possibly possessing a physical appearance that aligns with ideals of strength, intelligence and confidence. His attractiveness could be part of his deception, as he will seem like the ideal leader or saviour that the world needs in a time of crisis. Many believe he will have an aura of authority and confidence that makes people naturally want to follow him, seeing him as a trustworthy figure. While the Bible does not give a detailed physical description of the Antichrist, it emphasizes his deceptive, charismatic and appealing nature. His appearance and demeanor will likely be carefully crafted to attract, inspire and deceive, making him look like the ideal leader people want in a time of crisis. His ability to perform signs and wonders will reinforce this deception, leading many to see him as a savior. However, beneath this attractive exterior lies a figure bent on deception, control, and ultimately leading people away from God. The Bible doesn't provide specific physical details about the Antichrist's appearance, but it does emphasize his personality, charisma, and ability to deceive. Many believe he will have an aura of authority and confidence that makes people naturally want to follow him, seeing him as a trustworthy figure. Some interpretations suggest that the Antichrist may look universally appealing, possibly possessing features or a presence that appeals across different cultures and backgrounds. This may help him connect with a wide variety of people around the world. Some interpretations suggest that the Antichrist may look universally appealing, possibly possessing features or a presence that appeals across different cultures and backgrounds. This may help him connect with a wide variety of people around the world. Given that the Antichrist is expected to hold significant political and social power, it's likely he will present himself in a sophisticated, polished manner. He may dress in a way that reflects power and authority, while still remaining approachable and likeable. His smooth style, demeanor and even gestures may be calculated to appeal to people across cultures using his appearance to establish a sense of professionalism and competence. The Antichrist's appearance may be part of an effort to look like a saviour figure, possibly aligning with imagery or archetypes people associate with a heroic leader. His appearance could make him seem like someone who can save the world from crisis, making it easier for people to idolise him. The Antichrist will initially present himself as a man of peace and unity, perhaps even humble and compassionate. He will appear to have people's best interests at heart, and his look may reflect that image, someone who seems kind, calm and empathetic. This peaceful and approachable image will help him gain the trust of many, making people see him as a person who truly cares about global stability and well-being. Beyond his physical appearance, the Antichrist's ability to perform supernatural signs and wonders will play a significant role in convincing people of his supposed divinity or divine appointment. He may not rely solely on his looks, but will use displays of power to reinforce his authority and win followers. With the help of the false prophet, the Antichrist will likely use miraculous signs to add to his charisma, leading people to believe that he is uniquely chosen or empowered by a higher force. His outward persona will likely be crafted to appear wise, noble and compassionate, leading many to see him as the answer to the world's problems. Summary Believers are encouraged to look beyond appearances and to rely on spiritual discernment rather than outward impressions, recognizing that true faith and righteousness may not align with the appealing but deceptive image the Antichrist will present. The Bible contrasts the Antichrist with Jesus, who came humbly and without physical grandeur. 
Isaiah 53 verse 2 describes Jesus as having no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. In contrast, he may deliberately emphasize external attractiveness and charisma to win admiration and trust, exploiting people's expectations for a heroic or messianic figure. People may be drawn to his external beauty and power, which stands in contrast to Jesus' humility and inner spiritual authority, leading many to follow him based on appearance rather than discernment. The Bible provides several descriptions of the Antichrist's character, actions and influence, primarily from the books of Daniel, 2 Thessalonians and Revelation. Here's a closer look. The Antichrist will likely be a highly charismatic, persuasive figure. He will gain power through charm, intelligence and solutions to global issues. With immense oratory skills, intelligence and charm, he will gather a large following quickly. People will see him as a beacon of hope in troubled times, someone who can unite the world and bring peace. He will consolidate political power, establishing a one-world government, or at least a system of unified global influence, as mentioned in Revelation chapter 13, verse 7. He will likely introduce policies that enforce loyalty and compliance, gradually centralizing control. He will also control the global economy. Revelation chapter 13 verses 16 to 17 speaks of the mark of the beast, which will be required to buy or sell anything. This economic control forces people to choose allegiance to the him or face economic exclusion. Halfway through the seven-year tribulation, the Antichrist will reach a turning point. He will enter the Jewish temple in Jerusalem, desecrate it, and declare himself to be God. This event is known as the Abomination of Desolation, referenced in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. He will demand worship from all people, positioning himself as a deity. This blasphemous act will trigger severe persecution against those who refuse to worship him. His rule marks an intense period of persecution, especially for Christians, Jews, and anyone who resists his authority. Revelation chapter 13 verse 7 describes him as making war against the saints, seeking to destroy those who remain faithful to God. The Bible describes this persecution as brutal and widespread, with many being martyred for refusing to follow him. The Antichrist will have a partner called the False Prophet, as mentioned in Revelation chapter 13 verses 11 to 15. This religious leader will promote his image and encourage worship of the Antichrist. The false prophet will perform great signs to deceive people, such as calling down fire from heaven. He will create an image of the Antichrist, demanding that people worship it, and will enforce the mark of the beast on the right hand or forehead. The Antichrist will perform miraculous signs and wonders to further deceive people, as noted in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 to 10. These supernatural displays will be part of his effort to convince the world that he is divine or appointed by God. Many people, including those who are not deeply rooted in their faith, will be deceived by these signs, believing that his false claims and following him willingly. He will institute a system of identification called the Mark of the Beast, as described in Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 to 18. This mark will be required for all commerce, symbolizing allegiance to him. Those who take the mark effectively pledge loyalty to the Antichrist and accept his authority, while those who refuse it will face severe consequences, including economic exclusion and persecution. The mark is often depicted as a physical sign on the right hand or forehead, representing a clear and irreversible commitment to the Antichrist. God's mercy and forgiveness. Jesus repeatedly warned his followers to stay alert and watchful, not to be deceived. In Matthew 24, 4 and 5, he says, See that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. If someone realizes they were led astray by the Antichrist and makes the choice to break away, this act of discernment and repentance demonstrates a sincere commitment to God. God understands human vulnerability to deception, especially in times of crisis or confusion. Hebrews 4.15 describes Jesus as a high priest who sympathizes with our weaknesses. This means God recognizes that people can be misled, especially if the Antichrist's initial actions appear well-intentioned. The Antichrist's rule intensifies in the second half of the Tribulation, known as the Great Tribulation. 
which is referenced in Matthew chapter 24, verse 21. During this time, the Antichrist's blasphemous claims and oppressive control grow even harsher. Judgments from God, described as the bold judgments in Revelation, begin to be poured out on the earth, marking a period of unparalleled suffering. Natural disasters, plagues, and cosmic signs continue, revealing God's anger against the Antichrist's rule and the world's rebellion, the return of Jesus Christ. At this point, Jesus returns to earth, defeating the Antichrist and his armies. Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 21, describes Jesus leading the armies of heaven to confront the Antichrist. The Antichrist's defeat and judgment. The Antichrist and the false prophet are captured and thrown into the lake of fire, symbolizing their final judgment and eternal punishment, according to Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. The Bible also speaks of the spirit of the Antichrist, which is the mindset or influence that opposes Christ and promotes deception. 1 John 4, 3 states, Every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world today. In summary, the Antichrist is a prophesied end-time figure who will rise to power during a period of global crisis, presenting himself as a charismatic, peace-bringing leader. Initially, he will deceive many by promoting unity, security and solutions to the world's problems, gaining significant political and economic control. However, at the midpoint of a seven-year tribulation period, he will reveal his true nature by committing an act of blasphemy known as the abomination of desolation. At this point, he will demand worship and initiate severe persecution against those who remain faithful to God. His reign will culminate in a final confrontation with Jesus Christ at the Battle of Armageddon, where he will be defeated and judged. Final warning about the Antichrist. The Bible warns believers to stay vigilant, discerning and grounded in faith, to avoid being deceived by the Antichrist's charm, signs and wonders. Know your scriptures and keep God close to your heart. Jesus and the apostles repeatedly encouraged believers to prepare spiritually, to be aware of false leaders, and to resist any movement that contradicts God's truth. In Matthew 24, 4, 5, Jesus says, See that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many off the path of righteousness. And remember this, those who remain faithful and endure through trials are promised hope, knowing that God's truth is the only truth and will ultimately prevail. There is only one God, the giver of life and death, one God for the forgiveness of sins, and one God, the giver of everlasting life forever and ever. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and share to help spread the word of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And if you haven't already, come on over and join our family by subscribing to our channel. May God bless you and all your endeavours. Thank you for watching. Stay vigilant.